everybody, this is Corey at More Guitars and More Music in Evansville, Indiana. Great to see you today. Today we're doing a, a bit of a series on things that we have been doing during this COVID pandemic. It has completely upended our music industry uh, and how we work and function inside of this massive billion dollar industry. Uh, on a local level, I work as a bass player and work very, very frequently. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by uh, people that, that value my services. And when things got shut down in March of 2020, uh, we basically lost out on all of our regular gigs. I had a, a steady blues gig on Thursdays. I had a steady classic rock gig on Fridays and Saturday nights, and all of that got upended. Uh, one thing that, that uh, I had to do was take a look at my playing and say, okay, where do I go from here? I've got all of this extra time on my hands. Uh, what do I do with it? I want to keep my chops up. I want to uh, keep progressing uh, in my musical journey. So I turned to recording. Uh, I was very fortunate to be asked to play on a couple of records. Uh, I was able to record at home uh, using very simple iPad and an interface to get tracks to people. Uh, it really caused me to take a look at why I'm playing music and what kind of uh, benefit it is for me to be a sideman playing in cover bands. Uh, come to find out I'd spent a whole lot of my time, my playing time, learning cover songs uh, day in and day out. It, it pretty well was a, a secondary full-time job for me. Uh, one thing that, that this pandemic has done is allowed me to take a look at more at my creative side, which is why I got involved in music in the first place when I was in high school. I wanted to be a, a songwriter. I wanted to play in an original band and did that for a long time until the cover gigs started showing up. Well, the cover gigs dried up. So here I am back to reinventing myself as a, a more creative musician and doing that through not only my own songwriting, but uh, reaching out to songwriters in my, com my musical community and working on, on stuff like that. So inside of that process, I found out that I really didn't have a method to, to how I recorded. So took a step back and took a look. Okay, what's going to be the quickest path for me to deliver good bass lines for not only myself, but for other artists. There's lots of factors involved. A lot of us get red light fever. Uh, as soon as we know something is being recorded, uh, it is a version of stage fright where we think, oh no, I'm gonna make a mistake and it's gonna be on tape forever. Well, thankfully, due to, to digital technology, that's not the case so much anymore. You can record endless amounts of uh, redos and other takes uh, without having any kind of adverse effects on the, the track itself. So get that out of your head that uh, it has to be perfect, it has to be flawless every time. I may make some mistakes in the recording of, of what we're about to do. That's okay. We can fix it later. For now, we just want to focus on the creative aspect of it and get all of those, those uh, things that may hinder us from that out of our head. Another thing we want to think about when uh, trying to craft a bass line is, is this for me or is this for another artist? If it's for you, take all of the chances that you would possibly think of. Uh, you're going to do yourself a great disservice to not go down avenues uh, that you may have a bit of trepidation over. You know, is this going to fit? Is it too busy? Is it not busy enough? Get all of that out of your head and just do it. Lay down the tracks, listen back to it objectively, and decide for yourself. If you're working with another artist, you have to find a way to make it interesting for yourself, make it a usable track that fits with the, with the uh, rhythmic 
side and the melodic side along with whatever accompanying instruments. And one thing that's very important to me and very important to most artists is that I try to bring some of their artistic integrity into my tracks while I'm also showing off my skill set because they're contacting you for a reason. Um, I'm a firm believer that most of us uh, are a bit um, hesitant to work on other people's projects because we don't think we're good enough. If they've asked you, they've asked you for a reason. It's because you are good enough. So again, get that out of your head. Just make the tracks. One thing that I like to do with, with tracks, and Larry, our uh, brilliant video guy, uh, presented me with a, a short verse chorus type section, A, B section, uh, to record over. I listened to it. I went over it uh, two or three times. I want to kind of keep the idea fresh in my head. I want to know what notes are, are going on, but I want my instinct to prevail on the track because nine times out of ten, your instinct is going to be the right way to go on a track. So one thing that I like to do to speed up the process is if I can get the track beforehand, if I can get some kind of demo and or a chart, I'll, I'll take it and I'll chart it myself. I have a, a way of charting for myself that doesn't take me a whole lot of time to, to listen, figure out what notes, what chords are involved, and be able to lay that on paper so that I have a road map of that track. Uh, this particular piece was simple enough in composition uh, that I was able to commit it to memory after listening to it a few times uh, while still getting some ideas of some things I want to do. So that's one way to uh, make your tracks go a little bit faster. If you're struggling to learn a song, it's hard to put any kind of instinct, uh, passion, or art into it if you don't already have it either committed on paper or committed to memory. So keep that in mind. Uh, you'll, you'll definitely get a lot more work done uh, if you do a little bit of homework before you get to the studio because studio time is, is very valuable in most cases. So when I'm trying to craft a bass line, I want to start with the most simple thing I can get away with and I want to try to record that, if at all possible, to be able to listen back. So what I'm looking for is, is it rhythmically locking in with the drummer and or percuss percussion that's involved? Uh, two, does it fit melodically with the singer and, the, and or the melody line of the track? And does uh, my sound and the parts that I'm putting in and where I'm playing them on the neck, does it fit in with the band composition? Once I've done that, then I try to figure out what is the most complicated note aplenty track I can use and get away with it. Uh, I'll work on that for however long it takes, commit that to, to tape or uh, in the digital realm. I, I'm using all of these old school terms, uh, but uh, lay down a track like that, listen back to it. Then usually what happens is, is I'll take what I made very simple and what I made very complicated and I'll find the best parts of that and kind of meld the two so that we come up with something that is, has all of the rhythmic and melodic sensibilities of the simple track, but also a creative outlet for myself and the artist by incorporating some parts of the very difficult, complicated track. So here we go. We're going to listen to the track and uh, then we'll uh, talk about approach here in just a second.
sound and track. Okay, let's talk about uh, uh, what I was listening for. First off, you want to know what key it's in. You want to know if it's major or minor. That's going to influence uh, most all of your note selection inside of that. Having a bit of theoretical knowledge is never a bad thing, ever. I'm a self-taught player, but thankfully I had a mentor who convinced me to, to learn theory. Uh, this is when it comes into play is being able to develop something very quickly. So I know that this is in, basically in E minor. Uh, it does have a, a couple of really cool major chords to work with inside of this also. So we'll take a look at that. One thing that I'm looking uh, and listening for is uh, what's the rhythmic pulse? So we heard the tempo. One thing that st stands out is that intro. It's kind of a syncopated uh, offbeat thing, and it's just two notes. So we want to make sure that we accentuate that with our bass line. Another thing that I'm thinking about is what chords are being used, and do I know those chords on my guitar? So this is in E minor, so I know that I have E, G, B, and E available. Uh, it also goes to G uh, during, during the basic verse part. Um, that would be a G major in this case. So I know I have G, B, D, and G available to me. Um, goes to A, in this case it would be uh, an A minor. A, C, E are available. Then it turns around into a C, which is a major. So I have C, E, and G available. Then it resolves to a B minor. So I have B, D, and F sharp available to me. So those are the chord tones that I'm going to be working with. As far as scales go, I'm going to relate whatever scale to the, the chord that is being used. In E minor, I know I can use an E minor, E natural minor scale. I can also use an E pentatonic minor which is one of my favorites. When I go to the G chord, I can use a G major. Uh, so I have every note in G major available. The A is in A minor. And that happens to be a Dorian. I have a C major. So I think that one's the, the Lydian there. And then the B minor. Natural minor works, as does the, the pentatonic minor. So with that in mind, we're going to now create the most simple bass line we can based on just those chords. I'm primarily going to be playing root notes uh, in this take and just trying to lock in with the rhythm and make sure those notes are as precise and as full as I can get them. Here we go. Very simple, to the point. So now we're going to take a look at what we can do uh, to make this as complicated as we can.
right, that's the upper end of that whole, let's make it as difficult as possible. So uh, take a listen. There's probably some mistakes in there. I'm sure there is. I think I played, uh, I know I played at least one wrong note, but again, let it go, listen back to it. You can edit later, you can punch in later. Uh, let's just try to get some integrity and some energy and vitality into that track. All right, once we've listened to this uh, track back, we listen to the basic track that we put, try to find a comfortable uh, middle ground, and we'll be right back with that. Yeah, try to find that comfortable medium where everything rhythmically is right in the, in the pocket while still giving leading notes for chords, something for the singer or whoever is playing the melody over the top to have something interesting while still bringing a, a little bit of myself and my playing and my background into the track. Uh, Larry did a wonderful job with crafting this, this track for me. Uh, I hope it stands up to his artistic integrity because that uh, seems to be very high. Thank you all so much. Make sure anytime you want to talk shop, uh, let us know here at More Guitars or give us a call in, at More Music in Evansville. We are so here for you and thank you for everything that you do for us. Have a great one. <laughs>